Hello, you beautiful people. Today, we are going to restyle video. So we're going to take a video like this cat here and turn it into a different kind of style. It could be a different color, a different style, or even a different animal completely. So let me show you how that works. We're going to use the one model because it's amazing and we'll be doing it inside of Comfy UI. Oh, and do you know what a wolf's favorite holiday is? Halloween. Oh yeah, that was bad. How about why did a wolf sit in the shade? Because he didn't want to be a hot dog. So this workflow is going to be provided to you. You can find it in the link in the description. But essentially, we're going to load a video. So we have this cat here that's walking on a piano. And we're going to get something like this, obviously without the, the stuff here on the side. Now, how we do this is by something called one. And we're using a vase on top of that too. So we're having this video, we're loading this. And from that, we're using the first frame actually, and we're turning that frame into something else. So that is something that I've done manually. I've exported the first frame and I generated something else. You can do that however you want to do it, either inside of Comfy, or if you want to use chat GPT, whatever, right? But just turn the first frame into something else. And how you do that, uh, I'm going to get back to that in a second. But first, let me show you how to get this workflow installed. So here's everything that's going on. It's not as daunting as it looks. You're going to be able to one click this basically after everything is installed, but you drag and drop the workflow in here. And all of this amazing work is mostly done by Kijai. Big ups to him. You're going to have a bunch of missing custom nodes. So you go into your manager, install missing custom nodes, select all the missing custom nodes here, press install. And once that's finished, you're going to have a red button that says restart. And when you restart, you can also restart from here. You're going to refresh your browser up here. And when that's done, the nodes should be installed. And then comes to installing the models. And what's good about this is that uh, all the links are going to be inside of the workflow here. They're also going to be in the description below if you want to go that route. So click this link, find this model. You can rename it to whatever you like. I have renamed it into vase-1 2.1-1.3 B preview. You will place that into your Comfy UI models, diffusion models, right? Great. Then you need the one VAE. How do you get that? Well, you get that from the model managers. You go into your manager up here, you find the model manager, you search for one VAE. And here we go. There it is. And there's going to be an install button right here. So you just click right on that. You're going to go back. I'm going to close and we're going to install this model. So this you download from this link and you place it into your Comfy UI models clip. You could also place it in your text encoders. Both of them works fine. You make sure that they're selected here. You need to press R after you install these, if you haven't restarted. So press R, that will update and you should be able to see your models. After that, obviously you need to load a video. I've selected this cat here. I found that on Pixels. You can find a lot of cool videos on Pixels. Whenever you load something in, you're going to see some stuff here, right? So it should see this is what you should see by default. And the little gray numbers here, that is, it's, it's reading what the video is. So this video is actually 25 frames per second. And it's a total of 477 frames, right? But we don't want to load all of them. Because if you do some math, you can see that 25 frames per second, 477 frames, so that's a lot of seconds. So we don't want to wait all night for this to generate, right? So let's set this to 81, for example. Why 81? Well, one has been trained on 16 frames per second. So if we say that we want 16 frames per second and we want like five seconds, for example, we could do some quick calculations and do 16 times five. That will give us 80. And then we always add one frame for good measure or, you know, that's how it's made. And then we get 81. Now this is 25 frames per second. And we're actually going to output this in, in 25. But yeah, that's besides the point is actually trained for 16 
and it will give technically better results than 16, but let's just do it one to one, 25 now, right? If you want to skip any frames, you can select them here. This select every mph means that it will select every frame. If you set this to two, it will select every other frame from this video. Or if you set this to three, it will select every third frame for this video. So that you could get more lo longer into the video, but you will get choppier and choppier animation, right? We're just going to leave that at one. Now, remember we talked about this. How do you get this? Well, if you load one frame here, for example, and then you pull out a save image node, you double click or right click and find the node, save image, drag that in there. You can name, name this whatever you want. My first frame, doesn't matter. And just run this once to get the first frame. So we have one frame loaded. And if you just run this quickly, we see that that's done. We can then cancel the rest of it. And now this image has been saved and I can use this. And for example, take it into a controlled workflow, create a different image, put it into chat GPT, say, hey, I want a wolf instead and get that. And now when you get that image, you just put that in there, right? Make sense? Great. If it doesn't make sense, search for a control in the video. I have tons of them. So after that is done, you're basically finished. Except one thing, you actually need to prompt this too. Over here, we already covered this part. This is installing the models and you don't need to change any of the settings down here unless you want to optimize this. Over here, we have a prompt. So you should put your prompt in here of what you want to see, right? So wolf walking on piano in a frozen world of snow. That is my prompt because my image, this reference image is wolf walking on piano in the world of snow. You have something else. Well, then you need to prompt for something else. Does that make sense? Great. Whenever you're done that, you change your prompt, you can run. And when you run, you will start your generation. Now, depending on your system, it will take quite some time. But once that's finished, you should get a beautiful generation like this, right? Now, this workflow will require some GPU power. Now, if you don't have that, if you don't want to install all of this locally, I do have an affiliate link in the description below for Think Diffusion where you get 20% off and I get a small percentage off of your purchase. It's a great way to just get started. And you don't have to do a wolf. You could do something else. Let's say you load, let's see what we got here. This beautiful cat instead. So this is a different kind of cat, as you can see here, and a different kind of background. So we don't want a wolf anymore. Now we have cat walking on piano. So we can just leave it at that. And if you generate this, well, then you would see something like this. Cool, eh? So what is actually happening here? Okay, so after you've done all this, you want to figure out what's going on, right? So here we have some video resizing and a depth control map. Why, why do we have that? Well, actually what Vase is doing, so all this is one plus vase and think of vase as a control net. So it con controls what you want to see and it does so with a depth map. Now this vase kind of control it, right? Is currently using a depth map and sending that depth data into the vase encoder. So kind of the vase control net. And it looks something like this if you've never seen it before. Now, do you have to use depth? No, that's the cool thing, right? You can use something else. You can use a canny or an open post or something similar, right? So you would just change here. This is the images coming from the video and you could load, for example, we could do, do a canny edge and then you would send that data into uh, that actually that set the control video. So then you'd use a canny instead. If you want to see how it looks like, you would also have to uh, send that into the combine here, right? So after that has been made into this kind of depth control net or the depth map, this part is where it applies that. And you have a strength slider here. And this, I, I usually says it goes to zero to one. It actually goes higher, but we have, whenever you do that, it kind of breaks it, right? So we recommend having strength one as the maximum. And then you have a start percent and an end percent, right? What does that mean? Well. When do you want this vase control applied? So imagine for every frame, we are generating an image and that image is run through 20 steps, right? So if you start it to zero, 
and end this to one, you will run this at 100% of the generation. So all 20 steps will have the vase applied to it. If you run this to end at 0.5, for example, so half of the duration, you would run the vase control on 10 of these steps and the last remaining 10 steps would not use it. Why would you do that? Well, let's say, for example, that you're trying to turn this into a lizard or something else like a dinosaur or T-Rex. Well, what you then do is you have to kind of disable the vase or the control net because otherwise it's just going to look like this cat, right? So you need to start with that, but then let the AI kind of take control and expand a little bit, if that makes sense. So that's what you do when you kind of lower the strength and the M%. We're sending in T cache. So that is a way to speed up the process. Technically, it degrades the quality a little bit, but it's worth it. The video sampler here, that's where the generation is actually made. So we're running this at 20 steps. You, you don't need to change anything else here if you don't want to, you know, test out what's going on. I would just leave this default for now. All of this over here is actually not necessary. So after the generation, the only thing that's important is this part. So after the sampler has generated inside of latent space, we need to decode them into kind of our RGB universe, the, the blue nodes. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check my beginner's guide on Comfy UI. It's amazing and goes through a lot of that. So we're decoding from latent space into what we can see, and then we are combining all of those images into this beautiful video here of this wolf walking on, on the piano. Now, what's all of this then? Well, all of this over here, they're just concatenating a lot of different stuff and putting them into one video. And that is actually what we're seeing over here. So if you don't want to see this or it's actually not saved, you have to save output to false. Uh, this is just so you can see, okay, what's the control, what's the output, what's the input image. But if you don't need this, you could theoretically delete this and also delete that, right? So that's just there as a visual reference. And now you kind of learn how one works when restyling videos with vase. Again, what is vase? Okay, so think of one as the video model, right? One is the video model. One is doing the generation of the video. We're doing here image, having an image reference, and we're using this as an input. So it's a, essentially a video to video. But what is vase then? Well, vase is the layer on top where we kind of layer this control net based on the depth map. It helps us keep the consistency while changing the video. Does that make sense? Great. If it doesn't, ask in the comments. That's about it. It's fairly easy. Start working with it and generate some cool stuff. As always, have a good one. See ya.